I was born on August 29th, 1953, um, the, the 18th day of Elul, uh, during the summer on Friday night, on a Friday night, uh, that's when I was born. Um, and um, my father Davin, I remember, uh, by the Chuster Rav, which had a shul on 47th Street and 12th Avenue, and our cousins Davin there as well, the Rubens and Spitzers and the, the Mandels, I'm going to get to that. Um, and um, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a story that I tell over, uh, that, that my father tells over, that when I was born, um, the, 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 that Sat Marebi that they went to in 1926 established himself, um, uh, was a Holocaust survivor, came to Jerusalem, he was a chief rabbi, and established himself in Williamsburg. So the Barapak Hasidim and the, the Barapak people who wanted this Hungarian rab, rabbi, uh, you know, very important Hungarian rabbi, Yol Tadabam, to come to Barapak for, Sh for Shabbat. And they asked him, when are you going to come? And he said, if there's going to be a simcha, like a ofra or a bar mitzvah or something, I'll come. There'll be a simcha, I'm going to come for Shabbos. Don't forget the Jewish community, the survival community was very small at the time. It wasn't like it is today with, with hundreds of thousands of Jews in New York City. Um, um, and there were hundreds of thousands of Jews but then, but the survivor observing community was very small. Maybe a few, a ten, maybe ten thousand Jews um, survived and came to the United States. Maybe twenty-five, twenty, twenty-five thousand. That's it. And um, so, and those that were observant and those who were in that community, the Satmar today is a hundred thousand or two hundred or three hundred thousand people on the Satmar. Then it was very, it was a very small community. Uh, maybe a few hundred Jews in Williamsburg and some Hasidim in Borough Park. Um, so he came. So Friday night. So they called him up, uh, they found out that I was born on Friday night, this is going to be a Shabbat bris. Shabbat bris is a big deal, to have a bris on Shabbat. So he said, they called him up to the Satmar Rebbe, and the Satmar Rebbe said that he, okay, okay, there's a Simcha next week, I'm coming next Shabbat to Borough Park. And we're going to have the bris by the Chus Rav in, in the issue, in the, at that shul. He says he was going to come, because there was some Satmar Hasidim and Chus that were, he was going to be the Sandik because he was the one of the most important rabbis he was, he at the time. Was, was, the Gadol Hadar of the Hasidic community, of the Hungarian, not even Hasidic community, but the Hungarian survivor community, of all the survivor Hungarian. Now there's like, there's like hundreds, hundred different rabbis from different towns, but then there was like one main rabbi, one chief rabbi of the Hasidic community, of the Hungarian Hasidic community, and that was the Sat Marav um, at the time. Um, even though my father's rabbi, Yeshua Greenwald, was also like a very, very, very learned person, but he wasn't, he didn't have like Hasidic. Hasidic was different. They had like, they got together Friday night and they had like a tish on Friday night and he'd give shirayim, they'd come to him for bracha. The, Yeshua Greenwald was 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 called a rub, not a rabbi. So it was like a rub, he was like a real rabbi who actually learned halakha, and if you had a halakha question, and you sold the comments to him, and he used to give speeches in shul, he was the rabbi of a shul, not necessarily of chassidim. So, but the Sat Rebbe was coming next week, but the rabbi, the rav, the, the rav of the town of where my father comes from, the Krasna Rav, Rabbi Hillel Lichtenstein, also had a small community, he was a chassidic community, had a small shul, and he felt very close to my father because my father was a Krasna person and my father would go to him also and you know to see him and to sometimes go for Shabbat because we had family in Williamsburg and um, he would he, he this, the, in those days the communities were so small that the Rebbe the older Rebbe's treated their people that were close to them as children because they, my father didn't have a father didn't have a mother and so the rabbi in the Rebetzin of the community was the father in the Rebetzin. So he's like my grandfather. So he called up my father on Matzah Shabbat, because, you know, of course, they were observing, they didn't use the telephone. And they called him on Matzah Shabbos, and they said, Mazel Tov I'm coming for Shabbos, and I want to be Sandik. We're going to name, we're going to name your, the boy after your father, who I knew very well, Shmuel Heiden. So my father didn't know what to do. Here, 
holding the baby is the most is the most um, important kibud or honor you could give at a bris. Usually, you give it to the to to the most important person who is in the room. So first of all, the Satma Rebbe was going to be there, who was the chief rabbi of all the Hasid, of Hungarian Hasidim at the time, undisputed um, great leader of, of 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 the Hungarian community, which included Romania and they, you know all all those places. There was nobody really like the Satma Rebbe in stature um, in in those years um, until he died in 1979. The Hasidic community there was nobody of that stature. So he was going to be there. My father's Rebbe, the Krasner Rav, who we couldn't say no to because the Krasner Rav was a Rav of the town where he grew up and where my grandfather sort of had like a semi important job of testing the boys. And he survived and he was, um, he was going to, wanted to be Sadiq. And my father's Rebbe, who, who, where the shul was, was the Chusta Rav Yeshua Greenwald. Um, who wrote a very important book about the Holocaust. I hope it gets translated one day. It's called, um, I think, Shari Dima, Tears, Gates of Tears. Um, and uh, he wrote a, a little pamphlet about his, about his history uh, in the Holocaust. Um, anyway, so he didn't know what to do. Um, and um, so he was like beside himself. And also my mother wasn't healthy um, when she gave birth to me, she was bedridden. She, the doctor told her that she needs to be bedridden or stay in the house. She can't leave um, because she had this thrombosis on her legs. We, so what happened? So what happened? So it seems that I saved the day for my father's uh, dilemma. Um, what happens is, is that if the baby is yellow, the eighth day, you don't do the bris on Shabbat. If the baby is yellow. If, yeah, if the baby is yellow, which means there's a Billy Rubin count, babies sometimes can't have their bris on the eighth day of their birth. It may be dangerous eighth because day. their blood, they're, they're not, whatever, it's called being yellow or having some sort of, it, it's not a disease, it means that it's not developed in that area enough. The Billy Rubin count was not sufficient when they take a blood test to be able, and the Mo'alim know this, even back then in 1949. Late so what happened was he came, so he came Thursday night, and I was yellow, he came Friday morning and I was yellow, and they called off the, Shab the Shabbos bris. <laughs> so the Hasidim told Satmarevi, go, there's no Simcha. So he never came for Shabbos. He wasn't gonna come in just for, you know, Moshe Kong, Moshe Hyman's son's Bris, who, we weren't that close to the Satmar Rebbe. We had relatives who were close, but we, he was much closer to the Krasner Rub, his, his Rub from his town. The bottom line is, is that I'm very, very happy that the Krasner Rub was... Yeah. Because he knew, your, he knew the person that you were going to be named after. And he knew the whole family. He and knew he my knew father. He treated him as a child. Satmar Rav had... You know, in those days, the Krasnarov had like, you know, 50 families that survived that became Krasna. Today, Krasna is very big also. But, um, and Satmar had 300 or 400 families in, in Williamsburg and some in Montreal and some in Argentina and Uruguay and some in Jerusalem. But they had like a thousand families. So, so, it, so the bris was Sunday morning, um, not Shabbos, because Saturday night, the model, his name was Hanan Yukon, he was a very famous model. Um, he was very famous in, in those circles. And he came Saturday night, he said, oh, we can make a bris on Sunday morning. He's okay. From Friday morning till Saturday night, Matzah Shabbat, Matzah Shabbos, I, was, I got all well, and the bris was Sunday morning, and the Krasnarov ended up being the Sandik, like he said he was going to be. Um, and it was in the Chusta Shul, and the Chusta Rav was the one who named me, and the Briska, and the, um, the, the Krasner Rav was the that one who That must have been a powerful experience. Well, like, I don't remember it. Oh, no, no, like, that, like, I'm just saying, it must have been a powerful experience, like, naming a baby after someone that... Oh, yeah, you... Friday night, my mother tells the story, the first Friday night that I was home um, from the hospital, my mother tells the story that my father... Um, yeah. Here you are. 
myself. He was holding me. While he was making Kiddush. And me. I finally had a name for his father. And he was crying. Like I'm crying now. During Kiddush. Because he was crying that he was able to name uh, a boy after his father who passed away. Um, um, anyway. Um, so, so, um, so, the way, the way Anu, Anu describes that he was holding me like this, I don't know if they can see it. Yeah, they can see. Um, and he was holding me like this, he was making Kiddush like this.